Amazon Smile is the same Amazon you know. Same products, same prices, same service. Support True Light Missionary Baptist Church by starting your shopping at smile.amazon.com. Amazon will donate 50% of the price of your eligible Amazon Smile purchases to True Light Missionary Baptist Church. Are you or a loved one turning 65? Do you have questions about Medicare? What does the Medicare Part A, B, C, D mean? Or are you retiring from an employee plan? If you are interested in attending a free class to learn more, there is one coming up real soon. Sign up today in the foyer to add your name to the RSVP Masterclass Medicare 101 list. The free class is sponsored by the Connection Group presented by Javonica Moten, licensed insurance broker. When? Wednesday, September the 14th, 2022. Time, 11 a.m. until 11.55 a.m. Where? On the True Light Missionary Baptist Church Campus. Located at 7102 North Main Street, Houston, Texas, 77022. For more information, contact the church office at 713 861-8437 or Sister Barbara A. Marshall. Do you see that the Bible is not boring, dull, or old? The pages are still wet with ink as if God just spoke them. They are living and active. They are focused on the person of Jesus. Why don't you spend some time not learning about him, but getting to know him as you would a good friend? So, join us for Refuel Wednesday Bible Study each Wednesday. We will meet virtually at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Come in empty and leave full of the Holy Word of our God and his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. See you there. And, oh yeah, invite a friend. Family of Light. We encourage you to utilize your sermon note-taking template or any guide to study throughout the week. We pray that this will help you dig deeper into God's Word during your personal Bible study. More copies will be readily available for pickup this Sunday at the front and back entrances. If you would like a digital copy, please email tiaramorrison at ymail.com. Let's grow stronger and wiser together. TLMBC Preaching Council. True Light, we are in the third quarter of the year. We have been highlighting areas in which to focus our attention collectively to grow spiritually. In each quarter, opportunities were made available to help direct our attention on excelling in being the hands and feet of Jesus. For the third quarter, we are called to study. Let's connect collectively in studying God's Word together in weekly Bible study on Wednesdays at noon and 7 p.m., using Zoom call-in and weekly Sunday school on Sundays at 9 a.m. in the Education Building. All classes are live, in-person, and virtual using Zoom. Let's challenge ourselves and each other to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15, King James Version. You don't want to miss these study opportunities. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Christian Education Ministry. True Light, it's almost time to celebrate Pastor Halley's 43rd birthday. We invite you all to join in on the fun. His birthday is September 21st, but we will celebrate him on the third Sunday, September the 18th. We are asking each member to give the pastor $43 per person or partner up with one to two other members to reach this goal. We will have lunch with pastor after church that Sunday, Dutch Treat, 
location to be announced. Pastor Halley Party in the tune of Food Truck Party. Praise for the day. God will not totally change your character at once when you become a Christian. Rather, he will lead you through a process to become more like his son. God will not take shortcuts in the process of making you like Christ. He sees your life from eternity and will take as long as necessary to produce lasting spiritual growth in you. Do not become impatient while God is producing Christ's likeness in you. Do not seek more responsibilities than those given to you. Obey all that you know he has asked and he will lead you at a pace that fits your present character and his purposes for you. Have an amazing rest of your day. Amen. Good morning, church. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein for he hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend into the hill of the lord, the lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully for he shall receive the blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, say thy lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye ever for, and the king of glory shall come in. They ask the question, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Make a joyful noise. I, I, I think if I keep reading the Bible, folk who know the Bible get excited about the Bible. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. So I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up Up this morning with my mind. Say, oh Jesus, hallelujah, thank God, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. Oh, it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Say, oh Jesus, it ain't no harm. Say,
something mommy to win my mind. Proverbs 3, verses start at verse 13 through 18. And this is the word of the law. Happy is a man who finds wisdom hmm. and who acquires understanding. For she is more profitable than silver, and her revenue is better than gold. She is more precious than jewel. Nothing you desire can equal her. Long life is in her right hand, and her the left riches and honor. Yeah. Her ways are pleasant, and all her paths peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her, and those who hold on to her are happy. These are the words of God. Thank Let you. us have a word of prayer at this time. Gracious Master, we come humbly before you right now with nothing in mind right now but to say thank you right now, dear Master, for bringing us through another week, dear Master. You brought us through dangers seen and unseen. And we are so grateful right now, dear Master. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. We realize, dear Master, without you, all this wouldn't have been possible. We honor you right now because of who you are. You hung the moon, the stars. And you've done everything that was good, dear Master. All your creation. Father, we thank you because you have given us invitation right now, dear Master. And Father, you have uh, told us, dear Master, that uh, you that want none, none of us to perish right now. So we want to be witnesses for you here on earth, dear Master. We want your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, give us this day our daily bread. Father, we come to hear a word from you, Father. We want to pull off our old clothes right now, dear Master, of hatred, malice. And we want to put on the clothes of peace, joy, patience, and self-control. We want to love God. You told us to love our neighbor like you love ourselves. So, Father, right now, we want to remember those that are dealing with illness and sickness right now, the Master. We pray for their healing right now, the Master. We pray for our music ministry for the master for our back to school on yesterday in the master we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard we pray for our children right now the master 
We pray that you will continue to be with him and guide them, Father. We pray for the parents, too. Heavenly Father, we pray with the, for the ones that are in the hospital right now and dealing with illness and sickness, dear Master. And we pray for those who don't know you and the pardon of their sins. We bless, we ask that you would bless our true life family as a whole, dear Master. Be with us, Father, and keep us, Father. Father, we pray for our pastor. We thank you for our shepherd. That he comes right now to give us a word from on high. We ask that you would open our minds and our ears to hear from what he has to give us, dear Master. We thank you for giving him understanding, Father, and we pray that we would understand your word and make it very clear to us, Father, what our duties is here on earth. You made us, dear Master. So, Father, you, of our past that so we go back to the owner's manual because you are the one who made us, Father. You have all the answers, Father. Whatever we're going through right now, you sit high and you look low. And you can provide whatever we need. All we have to do is ask it. You say in your word when we pray that we have the keys to the kingdom and our faith will unlock the doors. So we lift you up. This morning we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Accept our praise to you this morning, dear Master. And with these so ever careful, we give you glory and we give you honor. Which you so rightly deferred. This is my prayer in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. city we're blessed in the field we're blessed when we come and when we go we cast out every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed we're blessed in the city we're blessed in the field we're blessed when we come and when we go But the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm missing late. Midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Yeah, I tell you, lady, lady. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. 
statement those visiting with us uh, it can be found in your bulletin and also should be on the screen this helps to guide us amen as we seek to be a church in the pursuit of excellence Our goal, let's say it together. Our goal is to make believers out of non-believers and disciples out of believers. Our mission statement is building a family. Amen, amen. Now at this moment, I welcome all of those who have joined us. You may be seated. I welcome all of those who have joined us in-house, those who are uh, in virtual church, um, as we know uh, that that is uh, a new environment that we are in um, post-COVID. Uh, we thank God for those who have joined us online and then those who uh, are here in person uh, i just want to say this if we have any visitors uh, with us this morning wave wave your hand say hello to us good morning amen y'all wave back at our visitors amen wave back at them tell them hey how y'all doing uh, if we were in detroit i'd tell y'all to say what up though that's what we say amen 
but just say good morning to them. Amen, amen, and amen. Here. of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will you because of who you are Lord I worship you because of who you are because of who you are I give you glory Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, oh, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you
chapter 2, verse 8. James 2 and 8. If you look there, you'll find these words recorded. If ye fulfill the royal law, According to scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Let me read it again. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to scripture, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For just a few minutes, and I do mean few, I want to talk to you this morning from these words. This stuff is easy. Say it with me. This stuff is easy. Say it again. Come on. This stuff is easy. Amen. You may be seated. When I was uh, in high school uh, over 25 years ago now, Brother Menifee, our chemistry teacher, his name was Brother B. Brother B was a very intelligent fellow. I guess you deep must be intelligent to teach chemistry. And those of us pupils in the class who found chemistry to be difficult, Brother B would often, uh, Sister Johnson, encourage us. And he would say to us that phrase, Dr. Keyes, he'd say, don't worry, y'all, this stuff is easy. For most Christians, most believers, most disciples of Christ, life and the work of a disciple and or a Christian, a child of God becomes difficult because we make it harder than it really is. Sister Clack, can I prove to you that we make it more difficult than it really is. Here's what most of us do in our faith walk and our faith journey. We spend a whole lot of time deep trying to fix everybody else. We, we spend a whole lot of time in our lives. We spend a whole lot of energy and or effort trying to condemn or correct someone else's behavior and little time trying to handle our own. And so it makes the journey difficult. It makes the journey hard because we're constantly and consistently saying, but they need to do this. Or they need to do that or those people over there are not as great as I am. They are not as far along on the journey as I am. When in reality, Sister Clack, this stuff is real easy. It's easy or it becomes easier when we recognize and realize that everything that we are, everything that we have, all that we seek to be is not tied up in what someone else is. 
but what God has for our individual lives. James is handling a problem, and those who attend Bible study, Refuel Wednesday every week, know what James is dealing with. James is dealing with, in chapter 2, the issue of discrimination. He's dealing with uh, favoritism. He, he sees a problem, not in the world, Deacon Thomas, but he sees a problem in the church. He says, you have become respecters of persons. You say to that person who does not look like, act like, walk like, talk like you. He says, you say to them, come sit under my feet or go sit over there. But then when there's someone who comes dressed in good looking clothes, you say to them, sit up front. I've got a special chair for you. He's dealing with the issue of favoritism and even discrimination. And the sad part is this, my brothers and my sisters, is that the discrimination, again, is not happening on the outside. It's happening on the inside. It's happening with those who profess and proclaim to be born again, Lord have mercy. Blood bought believers uh, from a, the, to God through Jesus Christ. He said that's an issue. When the issue is not with the world, but the issue is with the church. For those that make up the church and the reality is we made it a lot more difficult than it needs to be. While James is talking to those who are part of the 12 tribes, lost tribes of Israel, this word is very uh, 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 equipable and usable for today. My brothers and my sisters, most of us, if not all of us, are guilty of the same Christian crime. Favoritism. Discrimination. I see it, Deke, every Sunday. We only sit with the people we know. We only engage the people that we like. We only deal with those individuals who we have some common bond with. That's why I thanked you this morning, Miss Marisha Keys. I, I saw what you did. Somebody who you don't know needed something and you met them. The reality is, my brothers and my sisters, if we're going to be a body of believers, We've got to first look in the mirror, know that we aren't perfect, know that we aren't God's prima donna, know that we aren't all that and a bag of chips, and then go and meet people where they are. If you can't meet somebody and if you aren't looking for an opportunity to serve, then you are not a disciple. Let me say it again. If you are not looking for an opportunity to serve, you are not a disciple. You're a Christian. Christian just means you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But that does not mean you are following the ways of Jesus. James said, it's real easy and I want to make it real simple for true life this morning and anybody else who's listening because I'm tired of getting up here yelling and sweating my clothes out deep and ain't no change in nobody's heart there's no transformation in the spirit because if God gonna whoop me for this Lord have mercy <laughs> brother Menifee he gonna whoop us all for this if I got to take a beating for it, then I'm going to make sure y'all get y'alls as well. James says, this stuff is 
ease. What, how, Deke, how is it so easy? How, Sister Randall, is it so easy? He said, you, you've got to learn how to humble yourself. In the text, it's in the text. He's in the text. He says, "If, if ye, if ye, that's a conditional statement. If you are willing to, if you would, you would put in your mind that I'm not above anybody else. If, if you would put in your mind that that I'm in need of God's grace, I'm in need of God's mercy, I'm in need of God's uh, forgiveness, I'm in need of everything that God has for me. Jesus would say it like this, if you have no forgiveness in your heart, you will be met with unforgiveness. For the same judgment that you meter out, is the same judgment that you're going to get back. James says it's, it's simple. We must learn to humble ourselves. Here's, here's the sad reality. We go around saying stuff like this, uh, I'm a work in progress. No stuff. We all works in progress. Be patient with me. God is not done with me yet. No, he ain't done with none of us yet. But since we have come to that conclusion, we ought to work on it. Lord have mercy. If you can't say amen, say ouch. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We make the statement, Sister Kennedy, uh, Sister Kennedy, that God knows our hearts. And may I declare parenthetically that that ought to scare the hell out of you. To know that God knows what's in your heart. Jeremiah would declare it this way, that the heart is deceitfully wicked. That even when I think I'm doing right, even when I think I'm loving the best way I can, even when I think I'm forgiving the best way I can, I could potentially be wrong. That's the nature of human beings. And to know that God knows what's behind your actions, what's behind the motive, all to scare us. It ought to cause some kind of change in us. If no, if no behavior change that will keep me from doing something, James says it ought to at least cause this kind of change. It ought to at least have you focusing on the royal law. It ought to at least have you saying, Lord, what is it in my life where I need to be better? What is it in my life that I need to fix? What is it in my life that needs to be transformed? How does my mind need to be renewed? If ye. It's a conditional statement. It's up to us, my brothers and my sisters to decide if we're going to do it. If you're not going to be, or you choose to say, I, I'm not going to follow your will, Dr. Key. I'm good. I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it, then close the book. Don't read the owner's man. Stop talking about you a child of God. And I'm not talking about behavior. I ain't talking about smoking, drinking, cussing, uh, having premarital sex. I ain't talking about all of that because James fixes that for us. He said, because everybody's broken, so how do we handle the brokenness? He says it's found in the royal law. He said, if ye do this, if ye 
fulfill the royal law according to scripture. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Question arises, who is my neighbor? Who am I responsible to? That's an easy question for me to answer because John answers it in, in John chapter 1. Uh, Sister Mitchell, for God so loved the world. He didn't just love black folk. He didn't just love true Lightians. He didn't just love Houstonians. He didn't just love Texans. He didn't just love Americans. For God so loved the world. He didn't say, what's your political affiliation? And then I'll decide if I'm going to love you or not. He didn't say, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to mess somebody up this morning. He didn't even say, are you gay? Are you straight? Do you like this or do you like that? He said, for God so loved the world. That he gave. I'm mad this morning, y'all. But I ain't fighting y'all. I'm fighting the devil because I'm sick of the devil beating up on us. I'm, I'm sick of us giving him more power and authority than he has. Jesus declares to Peter, uh, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm going to find him. Every day you wake up, Satan ought to tremble. He ought to say, oh, no. God woke Sister Johnson up this morning. I'm in trouble. He ought to say, oh, God woke Sister Kennedy up this morning. I'm in trouble. He ought to say, God woke Sister Spencer up. I'm in trouble. He ought to say, God woke Brother Randall up. I'm in trouble. They coming for me this morning. And they're not coming with anger and malice in their hearts. They're not coming with unforgiveness. They're not coming with shame or forsaking who I am. They're coming in the name of love. This stuff is easy. It ain't hard, Asia. Because when I take myself and put myself in somebody else's shoes, then I begin to understand. We don't know the whole story. So we start with what we can see. And perception impacts the experience. And if I meet you in a certain condition, that's where I met you. But that's not where you started. And so I've got to love you no matter what, no matter who, no matter where you are. Why? Because God loved me in spite of me, in spite of me. Me and my brothers, my brothers, my, my road dogs, D, my homeboys, have watched each other grow, and God has taken each of us through something almost simultaneously to begin to correct our behavior. And here's what we've all come up with. Had it not been for the grace of God, Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, had, had it not been for God forgiving me, had it not been for his grace, had it not been for his mercy, had it not been for his love, I can tell you for sure where I'd be. 
John says it's the royal law. He said, love your neighbor for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, ain't no conditions on that. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. Uh, I, I, I just, this was just dropped on me because next week or the week after next, I'll be in Dallas preaching. D. Come on, go with me. Hang out with me. I'd like that if, if you don't mind. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go have fun there. I can preach. I can holler. I can do all that because that's somebody else's responsibility. Y'all belong to me. You belong to the Lord, but God has put you under my care. And so I got to make sure you grow. God says love. He says, love your neighbor. And I'm done. Don't just love your neighbor. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, Sister Johnson, this is not selfish love. This is not, oh, I'm the only person who matters in the equation. But if I don't love me, ain't no way for me to love you. If I'm unconcerned about myself, I cannot be concerned about you. I, I see it now. I I see me and my brother and sister Johnson talk about this. We see the weakness in a whole lot of black men because we've been there. We walk around with anger and hatred on our hearts. Can't smile at one another. Can't talk to each other. Women do it too. And a part of that is self-hatred. And when you hate yourself, You're going to hate the folk you come in contact with. No wonder we're constantly and consistently trying to send folk to hell when in reality we recognize about our own lives, I deserve to go to hell. James says, in order for you to love somebody else, you got to learn to love yourself. There's a Jewish scholar, I'm done now. There's a Jewish scholar by the name of Hillel. I use this soap called Dr. Bronner's. Y'all check it out, some good soap. But he quotes Hillel a lot on this soap. One of his first quotations from Hillel is this, if I am not for myself, who am I? But if I am only for myself, what am I? Because I got to love me. But if I only love me, and don't care nothing about you, then young Esquire Keys, I might as well go buy me a bubble and get in it and not be bothered with nothing or nobody else. Thank you, Deacon, Deacon Leon Bozeman, for reminding this pastor what this book is. It's the owner's manual. It's easy. Maybe I should use another word. It, it's simple. Because if you declare about your life that you belong to God, Spend some time in his word. 
not to see what his word is saying to somebody else, but what is his word saying to you as an individual? Brother Vern, I guarantee you, when you start looking at this spiritual mirror, you, you won't have time to judge nobody. You won't have time or energy to say what somebody is or ain't doing. Lord have mercy. Because God will start checking you. You won't be on the phone gossiping about the latest news, who with who, why they with them, why they doing this, why they doing that. You'll be saying, woe is me. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know at what stage God has you in. But I know this for sure, that wherever you are, whatever you are, whatever you doing, however you doing, God loves you. And that's his call to his children. He said, love one another. The doors of the church stand open. I'm still trying to figure out what that means. But here's what it means to us here. We would love for you to be a part of this family of guilty, sick believers. Because none of us in here are perfect. We would love to be your brother and or your sister in Christ. To hold your hand while you hold ours. And we walk this journey of life together. Learning from one another. 